Welcome back to Garage Noise, the channel that's dedicated to teaching you everything you need to know about paint and body repair. And today we're working on this Dodge pickup. Beautiful looking truck. It's got a nasty dent in this door. We're going to repair this today. There's also a little bit of a crease right here where this door handle is. It's got a crown right here. We're going to pull this in, repair it. So let's get in the garage and make some noise. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this down to bare metal so we can get our spot welder on it. This tool welds the tip into the low area of the dent and then you can slide hammer or pull it out with this tool. Very handy tool. I can see this body line has been affected. It's pushed in a little bit here. This dent travels all the way up into here. Once we pull out this low area and get this high spot tapped down, a lot of that energy is going to release out of this dent and hopefully we won't have to put a ton of filler in this. So let's go ahead and grind the section right here, right here. We'll pull these out and see how well this comes out. So what we did is we ground this down to bare metal, used our belt sander here. This is an Astro belt sander with some 36 grit on it. And now we're just gonna pull out this crease and see how well this dent comes out. hoping to get all this low area to pop out right here. Okay, we're gonna have to go up a little bit higher, but I'm gonna pull down here and I'm gonna tap down this crown with the hammer. So I'm pulling. Hopefully this will release some of that tension that's in that dent that energy. Oh yeah, starting to feel a lot better. better. Still a shallow spot right here, a flat spot. So I'm going to continue going up here and knocking down this crown. Okay, so this now feels pretty good. I think you can see how that dent's been removed. Even that little shallow area is pretty much gone. Now it's a little bit high right here, so we're gonna tap that down a little bit. And I can see there's a little bit of a dinger right there. And that body line might be in just a touch, but it came out really nice. I'm very happy with it. Even these little dings right here, we can just fill if we wanted to. We do have to pull out this little ding here. I'm gonna pull that out a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna tackle this area here. Got a crown right here. When it was pushed in here, it created a crown right here that we need to remove. So we'll push on the door handle from the inside We'll tap down this crown. Hopefully that'll release the energy that's in here, in this dent. And most of this will come out without using a lot of filler. Got the door panel off. This Darius took the door panel off. There's an access hole right here, and right up here is where the door handle is. So what I'm gonna try and do is get a pry bar carefully up against that door handle. And I'm gonna have Darius push out on it. So as he's pushing this door handle out, we're gonna tap down this crown and try and release the energy in this door handle. Okay, I'm gonna hold the door. Just keep putting a little more pressure on it. Okay, let off. That may not work, but we're gonna see. We're gonna have to take this off. Okay, so that wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to do, so we're gonna take off this panel so we can access the door skin. 
and really get some good push on this dent. Okay, Darius has got a two by four braced up against the inside of the door handle. And we're gonna push this out. I'm gonna push on this door while I tap down this high spot. Okay, ready? You hold on, I'm gonna hammer this way. There's a low spot right here that we're trying to get rid of. Now we're gonna have to pull that door handle out. So let's pull that door handle out. Yeah, now we still got a little ding right here we're gonna fill. But overall, it looks much better. We're gonna have to fill some right here and we're gonna have to fill around here, but it's gonna be a thin coat. We might have to do a little bit more dollying around, but I'm gonna run over this with 80 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander just to see where the high and low areas are. You, then you guys can really tell. So basically what I was doing was dollying this around. I had to push out this edge here, push out this edge right around here, and then hammer down a crown that was right here. When this was pushed in, it created a crown right here and a crown right here. And I still have to knock this crown down a little bit. Um, but the main thing was to get this edge pushed out. So we've got that done. We've got the handle fitting up there nicely. Now we just need to sand around this with 80 grit, knock down this crown just a little bit more, and then we can lay some filler in here. Now we're just going to grind these low areas. This is high, this is high, this is low right here. Um, this is all a little bit low through here, so what I'm probably going to do is grind these areas that are low, and then we'll hit it with the G90E and pull those out a little bit, maybe in here a little bit as well. And then we'll level that out just a little bit more, and then we'll tape up this edge and lay in a thin coat of filler right here. Okay, so you saw what we did. We went with the G90E and we pulled out those little low areas. This is pretty much flat right here. Feeling really, really good. We'll put a coat of filler on here. We'll put a coat of filler around here. We'll have to do a little bit right here too, but we wanna mask off this edge so we don't get any filler in this edge. I'm gonna sand all this area with 80 grit sandpaper. We'll probably feather edge out this paint so it's nice and smooth. We are gonna be applying our filler over the edge of the paint. Reason I like to do that so I don't have double edges that I'm gonna primer over. Do that, there's a double chance that it could shrink into those edges, meaning an edge of Bondo and then an edge of paint. So I like to have one edge, one edge of Bondo. The filler I use, you can apply it over properly sanded paint which is 80 grit sand, sand scratches. This Dodge truck is pretty much ready for some body filler. We're gonna use some USC body filler today. I think it's A67, I'll show you what we're gonna use, but we've got the dent pulled out, we've feather edged paint, so we just uh, smoothed out the transition from the bare metal to the paint. I am going to sand in here a little bit, but I am going to tape off this body line. We don't want any filler to get down in this groove where this handle sits. Just makes it easier to sand and clean up. Up our filler, we want to wash this with some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so this is the filler we're using today. This is the USC grip. It's a lightweight filler. 
can be applied over paint. Stir it up here because this does separate. We're going to put a little bit here on our palette. We've just got a paper palette here. Always cover up your filler. You don't want it to dry out. As far as the hardener, this is the hardener here. <clears throat> you want to knead the tube, make sure it's all mixed up. <clears throat> just going to put a little bit on here from the center to the edge like that. The ratio is 50 to one or 2% uh, hardener to filler. Now, when we're mixing it up, we're just gonna fold it in. Try not to stir it because that introduces air into the filler. And air in your filler is gonna cause pinholes and create more work for you to take care of those. So we're wanna, we wanna press out any air that's in this filler. Okay, let's go over to the car. The first coat, you want to press it into the panel to get good adhesion. Now we sanded this with 80 grit. 80 grit is the, is the right grit sandpaper to use when you're applying filler. I'm just going to start about two inches outside and we'll press it in. You want to have, before you start laying your filler, you want to have a good idea of where you need to lay your filler. So I know I need I know where I need to put this filler. We've got some low areas here and low area here. And then of course the metal we straighten. See, this is not quite as smooth as that U-pull filler. Now, most of this is going to get sanded off. Now, as I put my second coat on, I don't have to put as much pressure on this because I don't want to push the filler out of the dents. I kind of want to leave the filler in the center. I don't want to leave the filler on the edge, so I'll press, I'll push a little harder on the edge and then kind of lighten up on my pressure as I get through the center. We'll let that cure and then I'll show you how we do our initial shaping of the filler and then apply a second coat. So now we are going to shape this body filler. We've got some 80 grit sandpaper here. This is Cubitron, 3M Cubitron. Fits nicely on our dustless sanding block. And we're going to block this. We're, we're not going to expect this to be perfect after we're done blocking this, but we want all those low areas to be filled. We want to flatten it out. So we're just gonna block it in an X pattern. Now. So I'm using this medium sized block. I might use a longer block on this down here so we can cover more surface area, but typically you wanna use a block that's long enough to cover the surface of the area if you don't have any weird contours. So you wanna be able to lay this block flat against the panel and cover the largest surface area possible. I'm going to go in all different directions. So I'll turn this lock a little bit. So I'm sanding these edges here. Now you can see we're breaking through a little bit there. So we've got a low area here and it's probably a little low right here. Now the biggest mistake I see beginners make is they want to take out too much filler. So this is good here. I don't have to block this anymore. If I do block it more, I'm gonna block it with 180. But I don't have to put any more filler over this. There's enough filler in this. It's still got a little bit of material here that I can block down with 180. So I don't wanna go over that too much more, maybe just on the edge with this 80. So if you start taking out too much material, what's gonna happen is it stops making it straight. It starts to make it wavy. Then you apply more filler. You take out too much filler again and it continues to be wavy. This is a vicious cycle that you get into when you take out, when remove or block too much filler out of your panel. Don't take out too much filler. When you're getting close, start refining your scratches. When I get this close, I know I need to step it down to, I need to step it down to 180 because I got, I have to remove those 
80 grit scratches. And if I don't have the filler to do it, then I'm gonna be taking out too much filler and I'll have to put in more filler. Let's use a little guide cut on this so I can show you where we're at. Low spot right here. Low spot. So I'm hitting bare metal, so that's low right there. Look how nicely that blacked out. Now it's breaking through right there. Could be a little bit low right around here. So this is smoothing out a little bit low here, but I think that'll block out. You got a little bit more blocking to do right here. <laughs> little few imperfections, but we'll use glazing putty to fill those. Okay, that feels good. I'm gonna go over it with 180 and then we'll use some glazing putty over this top section. Here we've got a high spot here. I'm probably gonna tap that down and then we're gonna put a, a skim coat of filler right there. So let's block this out. For that, I'll use the long block. So we can see where the high filler is getting blocked out and leveled out to the, the rest of this panel. So I put some guide coat on here and now you can see how this body filler is a little excessive right here. So we're blocking that down until it matches up with the rest of this panel. Then we have a relatively straight panel. So let's continue doing that. X pattern, I'm not pressing hard. I'll go in different directions. Now that, this metal's firm, okay? If you have stretched metal and it's a little tin canny, so it acts like a tin can, it moves in and out very easy, then blocking, it's, that's gonna make blocking really difficult because you're never gonna be blocking it straight because it keeps flexing and moving. You, your block can't block a straight panel. So you gotta make sure your metal is firmed up before you start adding your filler. Filler will not firm up that panel. So you can see this getting a little bit light through here. We're getting down to the metal right here. We've still got a little bit of a low here and we've got to clean up these edges. That's feeling really good. We just got that little bit of a low right here in the center, but we can fill just that. You see, we haven't broken through. We've got right here where we're starting to break through. We're not quite to bare metal, but we're almost to bare metal. I'm gonna use this smaller block. I've got some 80 on it. We're gonna do this area and then this edge. And I'm just gonna use this small block for this edge. This is all straight here, remember. So we're just concerned about blending this into the rest of the panel. See how I'm going out into the center? We're just going in an X pattern. Now we're gonna to have to put a little filler in here. Now we have a smooth transition. Our edges are smooth. We're gonna clean that up. That's just extra filler out in a straight panel. 
So this is ready. We need a little bit of filler here. We're gonna block this out real quick. Okay, we've got a high, high spot right here. We're gonna tap that down. This is a little low, this is a little high. This is straight into here. That's all we need. Now we'll put a little skim coat right here. I really think we're gonna leave this alone. Maybe a little bit around that corner. Okay, we got some filler here. We'll mix this up. A little filler here. Fill that corner a little bit, just fill that little low spot and then that, block this out and we'll be ready to uh, spray in some primer. Okay, we're gonna stick with 80 and we're gonna block this out. I've got this medium block here. Okay, we're gonna leave that alone. This is still a little bit high here, so. We're going to tap that down and put another coat of filler there. I'm going to continue blocking this. So we had a little low spot here, a high spot here. We tapped it down. We put another coat on and blocked it. It was still high here, so we tapped it down. Remember we had a couple small dents at the bottom of this door, so I went ahead and filled those and then we blocked them out with some 80 grit sandpaper and then I blocked over that 80 grit with 180 to refine those 80 grit scratches, get it cleaned up and ready for some primer. And then off camera I went ahead and blocked this entire repair area with 180 grit sandpaper. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my orbital sander with some 180 grit sandpaper and we're cleaning up the outside area of this repair and clean it up all those 80 grit scratches and refine those to 180. And then we'll go over it with 320 as well before we primer. Now I'll go ahead and take my orbital sander and some 600 grit sandpaper and I'll prepare this entire door for primer and the blend and we'll sand it with 600, all the large areas before we apply our primer. And then all the small areas that I miss, all the body lines and the edges will go over by hand with 600. Be sure to check out the next episode when I share with you how to mix, apply, and block sand out your 2K primer. I hope you found this video helpful. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. If you want to learn more about paint and body repair, check out this video now. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.